It's the 19th day of July, 2015, and this is The Radical Agnostic, episode 20. Oh, it's a milestone. Oh. My name is John. I'm your host. My co-host is Mark. Hi. On Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, on microphone number four, the stowaway guest, Brian Richter, everybody. Howdy. And uh, joining us today, not our guest, is Brian's lovely Of course wife. she's our guest. Uh, I'm sorry to go over. No. Um, Christine Richter. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, you're doing good on the mic. I didn't even tell you how to do it, but yeah, you, you want to just hear your own voice in the headphones. Brian's been screaming at her at home. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. Constantly. <laughs> Don't say anything stupid. Don't embarrass me on the show. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's been like it's 20 years and ongoing. <laughs> um, Has it been so long? Broadcasting from the heart of the Sonoran Desert, Tucson, Arizona. Paula and I just got back from Phoenix, Arizona, the only place in the world that's hotter than here. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we're going to start right off with that because last night, Paula and I felt the burn. <laughs> Feel the burn, everybody. Bernie Sanders. You looked like you were going to say something oh, disparaging I was, I was, I was about gonna, my... No, I was going to say something before you said his name. Oh. Say so you felt the burn of Hillary Clinton. Ugh. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, let's just jump right into that then. This was the... It was kind of a historic event because this was the largest political rally before the primaries ever, and it was Bernie Sanders. But how do they know that? They like, count. By They've counted forever, like in history, political rallies... Before well, a primary? They've done so for the last 50 years, at for least. For the last 50 years. Before, okay, for the last, I'll give you that. And before that, the population was so small that it's impossible that anyone, that one rally would have had more than 11,000 well, yeah, people. But before that, they didn't count like Native Americans or blacks or, you know, women. or So there still might have been more people there. They just wouldn't have counted them. Yeah. That's and we're off and running. Episode 20. I wait for this dude every week, yeah. man. It's fucking beautiful. Mark is my foil. The yin to my yang. Um, yeah, it, it was crazy. There were 11,000 people there. It was the biggest of its kind. And um, they had to change the venue to the Phoenix Convention Center. And uh, yeah, I've never been to a political rally before. It was It was a little weird. You know, it's just all your supporters. And... Was Nobody was booing. What's that? It was all supporters. No. Yeah, it was all supporters, and um, you know it was free, so so other people could have protested. I was hoping there would have been some protesters there. there no was, Confederate flag wavers, carrying guns, open carrying. Nope. No. <laughs> there was just one Jesus guy outside. You know, screaming. rainbow wig. No rainbow afro wig. No, no. not John three sixteen sign. No, oh. he, no, he wasn't that entertaining. He was just saying, you're all going to go to hell. It was pretty, like, he wasn't that into it. <laughs> Cause, cause he wasn't that into it. What, what was his reasoning for you yeah. all going to go to hell? Because you vote Democrat, a... vote for a Jew, vote no, for... No, just because the Bible. Because you were in Phoenix? <laughs> just because the Bible. Yeah, we're already there, dude. It's yeah. like, haven't you looked at the thermostat? Seriously. Yeah, so, um, so it's all, it's just... It's a stump speech that, that, that Bernie gave, and so you, you're supposed to clap at certain times. But it was very spontaneous. I mean, people were very excited. There was a lot of, of uh, support and energy for him. And was there a light-up applause sign? No. Oh. But, you know, it's just when he says, you know, this country has got that blah, 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 and then everyone he takes a pause and everyone goes, yeah. But it was very, it was inspiring, man. I. He went over his his main issues: income inequality, um, single payer health, Medicare for all is one of the things he's going to pursue. So, in other words, free health care for every single American, like like every other wealthy country, um, and that got lots of cheers. Uh, the um, so would he change 
It would become totally different from Obamacare. Yeah, it was. it's kind of what Obamacare was originally meant to be before it got hacked to pieces by the opposition. And the comp, he had to make a lot of so compromises. So what would it do? Would it eliminate private insurance, period? Is that his idea? No, it's just that you get, uh, I believe you get like a basic, you get Medicare. So whatever's covered by Medicare, we would all have automatically. And if you had money and made a lot of money, it. you could buy a, one of those fancier Supple- plans. Yeah. A supplemental It's plan. interesting because there's so many doctors that won't take Medicare right currently. Oh, a lot right. Of them won't for whatever reason. I don't know why. But. And so you know a lot about that because you work in the uh, hospital, right? Right. Yeah. In the psych, behavioral health, yeah, yeah. behavioral health, but um, not clinically, but yeah, well, pro- they probably don't take it because they can't charge more than a I certain bet. amount, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure it's good for some people because you know they they can charge whatever amount, and so they're just seeing random people re- not really doing too much and getting to charge the government, you know, a decent amount. But then other people that are actually doing stuff and providing what they think is, you know superb service probably can't charge as much i just saw a friend of a friend uh got a snake a rattlesnake bite and i saw her hospital bill and it was a hundred and thirty five thousand no dollars wow how long was she there i don't know that, um that's the, life I mean, crippling debt yeah in I, one go i know she was in the um uh intensive care ward and wow. so i don't know how long she was there for but i mean that's insane. That is, I didn't realize it would be so. That it fucked her up too. Did it take her a long time to get to the ER or something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, l- l- like the uh, the regular services was only like about oh, I bet six thousand know dollars. Was it a Mojave Rattler? I don't know. But um, for uh, like I said, her uh, intensive care and a regular room. And like lab work and oh, yeah, uh, radiology or yeah, something else. Fast. It was like all that. Was added up to the hundred and thirty five thousand because, like I said, her regular services were like seven thousand dollars, maybe. Wow! Just for like whatever the hospital actually did. Yeah. Not on top of so like you would finding have out. To claim <coughs> bankruptcy unless you have yeah you know, plenty of money to cover it. I guess. And of course, bankruptcy doesn't do anything to student loans at all. Right. Uh, which is a nice little thing. And student loans are are the interest rate is about ten percent, which Bernie was saying last night. Uh, if if uh, if an, if your mortgage on your house or whatever, if that loan is two or three percent, why the hell is it illegal to charge ten percent on student loans? Um, which, which is an excellent point because it's profiteering off of those loans, and the government actually makes money from that. Of course, right. since they give out a lot of those loans, and I know it firsthand. I mean, I've been paying mine for like eleven years, and I'm still like twenty grand in the hole. Um, Paula makes her payments. It's like hun- several hundred dollars a month, and she hasn't paid any of the principal. She's paid like seven dollars of the principal off because the interest is so high. And that was one of the biggest. Uh, I was kind of tracking the biggest applause in the room when Bernie would go over different points, the wealth gap, you know, the billionaires uh, class and everything that got a lot of uh, support, obviously. But then when he said uh, that student loan thing, that got huge reaction which showed that there was a lot of young people in that audience. And uh, when he said he, another of his proposals is to offer free public college tuition to every American. So every public college would be free under his plan. So you think currently they have it. So it's so expensive because they really do. They only want rich people's children to be able um, to afford. It's, you know, it started in the 90s education. and, and mm-hmm. they the these colleges started focusing on things like sports and entertainment and stuff like that. And and the uh, amenities that you get when you go to the college. So kids start, you know, would visit these colleges to see which one they wanted to go to. And the whole thing is pull that kid in by giving him the flashiest, craziest stuff, rock bands playing and this and that and great sports teams. So they, they colleges spend a lot of money on that to bring in uh, the new students. And then um, so the tuitions go up as the colleges try to outdo each other. And but spend colleges more money. make a lot of money on sports and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's, mo- it's all profit, really. It's, the, the whole end of what the whole point of what they're doing is to generate additional profit, which they do no, right. very well. But which the government's ten percent, you know, interest rate that doesn't um, account for that. I mean, that's like why why is it so high? I mean, it, that 
Yeah. Is that them wanting to keep poor people poor? And not, no. You know, well, move up in conspira- liberal conspiracy theorists would say that. But um, mm-hmm. it, it's just for me, I think they're like Sally May, who has my loan. That's a private company, and they just um, want to make money. The, if you make the interest rate higher, that's just free money for them. Also, more people are going to college now, so maybe it's like... That's true, you know, too. It's, it's more of a... a Competitive or... Well, it's, it's just there's there's a, a bigger population for them to um, get that money from. Like before when it wasn't... It was just like once in a while people would go to college. It wasn't a necessary thing that everyone did. Right. And they'd be like, oh, well, let's just, you know, not charge them that so that they there's more people that will want to go to college now that it's like a a thing that you do that you don't even think about that you just go to college it's like high school it's probably more like well we don't have to really give an incentive for them to come and not charge as much now we can like charge them since they're gonna go and and because that student loan infrastructure exists they know oh you don't have to be able to afford this college to go here. Just get a, just get a giant loan, and that's what we all do. Like they did, did that with the houses in the mid two thousands. You know, they were right. just like, oh, well, you can't afford it, but we'll give you the money. Take it, yeah, <laughs> hey, take it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not just state college, but now there's all those like you know University of Phoenix and right yeah. and online business colleges and yeah. So so Bernie gets a lot of support for. Finally, standing up and saying you're you're crippling the you the young people the the college educated young people in the country is that really a good idea is that going to help you it won't help us in the future no it won't that's so, a horrible idea it's awful it's awful but it's all profit so it's all in the interest of making money so he's saying get the hell get that shit out of our government get it out leave that for private companies well, that, that's currently the leading American value man make money. Right, that's the leading American value. Oh yeah, it's the first thing we. That's the first thing we really like are solidly taught. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, two, um, the other biggest uh, applause he got was when he's talked about veterans because Bernie Sanders was the chairman of the Senate uh, Veterans Committee for a while, and um, he he's talking about um, all the the veterans that are waiting for health care, they're not getting treatment and all this stuff. So he said. You know, if we can spend, uh, what was it, $10 trillion on the Iraq war, uh, then we can spend like $500 billion on veterans and make sure they all have care and treatment uh, when they get back. So that got a huge applause, which that was one of the, th- the things that maybe I didn't expect as much because in a liberal crowd, you know, you get a lot of respect for, for veterans and soldiers and cops, but not nearly the kind you'll, you'll get from conservatives. So the fact that he brought that up and that it got the loudest applause, the most wild, you know, applause in the whole room. It should, though. And I think people have, you know, the liberals have kind of changed to be more pro soldier you know they're probably and more anti-government but more pro-soldier because they know that it's not they're not choosing where they go or what they do as right. a soldier it's like and they're young men usually combat veterans well and I, I, don't, I don't think they're they're not anti-soldier they're anti-war right. right so when when the republicans or conservatives bring up soldiers as like you have to support them in their role in war and going to war and all that kind of stuff that's when you get the liberals saying no, uh, we're not into that. If you're talking about um, anyone that's been to war and giving them, you know, helping them out later if they need it, mental health services, uh, food stamps, whatever, anything like that, uh, you know, medical bills, I'm pretty sure that most liberals, if you talk to them about it, are supportive of that. Yeah, yeah. it's a bipartisan <laughs> issue. But uh, it, it, there's nothing more frustrating than, than being a liberal and, and being – and and go, and go arguing against a war that you th- that you think is unjust and then having people come back and tell you that you're against the troops there's nothing more frustrating because it's like okay if we do what i say and we don't go to war that's a b we do what you say we go to war we go do this iraq war or whatever which case kills the most soldiers <laughs> and ruins the right. most families and takes the most limbs off of these guys which one a or B. <laughs> so it's so frustrating to, to have that thrown at you as yeah. someone who's against war. It's like the liberal who's against war is the most pro-soldier ever. Now, a lot of those soldiers are conservative themselves and want to go. But that's that's another thing altogether. I mean, but 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 I think when that happens, you're dealing with an extremist. 
and I, I'm learning more and more that when you're when you're dealing with an extremist, if you disagree with them at all in any way, they're going to take it right to the far end of that spectrum, and and lump you in with everything that they hate. Yeah, well, they'll decide which is a lot. Or they'll decide you're either stupid or evil. Right. It's so so, but again, those are extremes. Yeah. yeah. There was a good editorial cartoon about that. It was just a drawing of the Grim Reaper and said death on it. And he said, I support all the troops. So Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, on both sides. <laughs> like, that guy's yeah. truly. Yeah. yeah. He's impartial. Then again, though, Brian, uh, like the Congress people who voted against the Iraq war in 02 or was it 03? They did take a lot of fire from mainstream conservatives for being unpatriotic. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So that wasn't, a, it's not always extremism that tells no, but, the, but like how many people actually voted against it initially? It wasn't very many. No, it was very it was fairly few. unanimous. Bernie Sanders is one that comes to mind. Hillary Clinton, unfortunately, does not come to mind because <laughs> she voted for the Iraq war. Yeah, of course yeah. she did. Yeah, which, there was only a couple that voted against it. Yeah, there, there really is, weren't many at all. No, very few. And, and, and On either side of the table. This is one of Jeb Bush's biggest weaknesses, is A, his support for the Iraq War, B, his familial relation to the guy who started it. That's one of his biggest weaknesses. Hillary can't mention that if it's him versus her in the general election. She can't bring up his biggest weakness because she voted for it too. So that, that it's another way where if you get those two candidates in the general election against each other, where it's another way that important issues will not be brought up or mentioned because they're both the same on them. Mm. Tragic. Well, she could bring it up just because um, she at least now acknowledges that it was a bad decision. He doesn't really because he says, well, that's. It wasn't really a mistake because we know that stuff now. Right. We knowing, didn't know that back then. Knowing we what we knew that, then, I would do it again. Right, was something right, he said, right. which she, I think, says, "Knowing what she, I do now, I it was would not mistake. do it again." Yes, yes she mistake, does. So. That's correct. But I don't think she can bring it up because then he's, you know, he can just say, "Okay, you're against it now. You voted for it, though. You voted. You made it happen." So he can he can criticize her for being a political no, right, flip flopper. By, sure. by doing but, that. But then she could say, but I, I learned from my mistakes. Right. And I would not repeat it now. Whereas you obviously don't learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And whatever yeah. either one of them says, it's all. No, yeah, bullshit. it's all bullshit. But. Yeah. So uh, it, it was, th- this rally was a lot of fun. It was really cool. It was a, a once in a lifetime thing. And it was, it was historic, uh, the size of it. And, the, and it, he has more supporters um, donating to his campaign and coming to his rallies than anyone else on either side right now. So it's more, he's more than just a fringe guy popping up for a few weeks. So well, if you're stuck in a box and you want to get out of the fucking box, then, then, you, do you, then you have to actually physically get out. And if you're looking at three main candidates, which it sounds like you are from who you mentioned – then there's only one of those that gets you out of that box. Right. That gets you that because Hillary or Jeb, either one of them is going to continue the status quo. Oh yeah. Only one dude. Only one dude that's names in this whole thing to me is going to go against the grain. Yep. Anybody else is going to just keep doing what their party tells them to do. So if you want to a chance at change, you can't vote any of those ways. You have to. You have to vote out. Like I always say, vote out the incumbents. But you have to vote. That includes the party. You vote out because he may be running as a Democrat. I know Beef's going to say he's a Democrat, right. but he's a fucking independent, longest in serving the, independent congressman who got in, in, in the US Democratic history. primary so he could get in the fucking debate with Hillary, so now, he could challenge her on the issues. You he, make you so, make you make, but, make but he's he's the only chance to get out of that box to break the status quo. Right, but but my point isn't that he's a Democrat. I, I know that he's a and, he, and he was a socialist, and now he's joined the Democratic Party to become their candidate. But what? My, what, um, why I bring that up is because him doing that, then he's in service to the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And we don't know exactly what all that means and how much pressure is going to be put on any candidate 
by their party well, to we do, do know certain that, things. Though, to, well, that, we think we do. We think we do, but well, we're not really. Words, we're, we're agreed that really, it's a lot of pressure. Agreed, but yeah, isn't we, that we, only right. if they endorse the candidate? Well, well, all I'm saying is, is well, the, yeah, they endorse the candidate. They say that this is our candidate. We this is who we. So, well, um, we all know who they're going to endorse. Do they not really have any? Responsibly to the party until you're endorsed. I, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of like you know well, uh, backroom shenanigans yeah. that go on. That uh, that's what I was talking about. Us not being privy to. Like, right. there's all kinds of stuff that deals made and whatever that we don't really know about. That's so yeah, my my point was that. So I had vowed basically after uh, Obama got in the first time and started doing stuff that I didn't like that I was never ever going to vote for either Republican or Democrat again. I just wasn't in, in like like you know in a because uh, it's always disappointing. But you can to still actually get to actually get them to win. You can like in a primary, I, I would vote for him just to. Right. Make, make, you can still not, vote for him though, and and, and, and you can still I vote can't. for that and be true to that not, statement not, not because it runs as a Democrat. No, but but here's the thing: tech, the, the technicality that gets you out of that is that the technicality. Yeah. Okay. If, if, what is it? If if we're discussing, am I is John a Democrat or a Republican, or what what party do I belong to? The the answer to that can be derived by looking at my voter registration. And on that registration, it says independent. So it, we would I say John but, is an independent. But, that but same you're, thing you're can missing, be said for Bernie Sanders. You're missing my point. You're uh, missing I my know point. The, no, I no know my the point, point is I don't want to give power to either of those parties anymore. I don't want one of those parties in power. I don't want one of their candidates in office. But he's not one of... He's if not. he runs as a Democrat and he gets elected as a Democrat, he's a fucking Democrat. No, he isn't. His, you, you, his How vote, do you know that, John? Are you sure that he's going to sure? vote exactly like a socialist? No. Because he's not under the Socialist Party anymore. I'm not he's under the Democratic how, Party. I'm not talking about who he's going to vote, who he's, well, how he's going to vote. Well, what the fuck are we talking but, about but then? Because I don't want someone going in as one thing and telling me that he's one thing and then voting in a different way. Like I don't want that anymore. No, fuck that shit. I'd rather sit at home. I'd rather sit at home and play fucking World of Warcraft or whatever the fuck I would do. Hmm. But if he continues to uphold the same policies and ideals over 40 years, and if he gets elected, he continues to do that again. And you can look at his donor list. How have you betrayed yourself? And his donor list is public. If he does. All I'm saying is I don't don't have complete faith that that's going to happen. Well, do you have complete faith in anything? I mean, I don't have complete faith in anything. Well, that's fine. No, I don't don't have have complete complete faith. faith faith. That's reasonable. That's totally reasonable. I I don't have complete faith either. but, But... it, it's all I'm saying is that what what upsets me, and it sounds like what upsets you. If you're not going to vote for either of the two parties, then you don't want the status quo either. No, and neither do I. And out of out of out of the people that you're looking at, can't we agree that he's your best chance to get out of the status quo? Even if, if we he have is any is at all, Democrat, if we have any chance at like, all. Like I've said, I would rather vote for a third party. I would rather vote for a third party that I know is not fucking behooven to Democrats or Republicans and would then be fucking a third party that actually comes up and fucking throw a monkey wrench in the whole works than vote for a Democrat or Republican. And when I voted for Nader, when I voted for any other third parties ever, I would always get from people, well, then you just helped blah, blah, blah get in office. You threw your vote away. You blah, 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 blah. And so that's what I'm fucking fighting. I'm giving the middle finger to every motherfucker that ever told me that shit and I'm telling Bernie Sanders and anyone that supports Bernie Sanders you should try to get Bernie Sanders to run as a fucking independent well you can't man that's the well, whole then problem. fuck him no, I'm not it's voting not, for it's him. Not fuck him it's that he doesn't have the resources you to don't do that. understand my point so that's fine but I'm not gonna vote for him why not decide your vote based on voting record I've donors decided my vote and consistency on all that Democrats and Republicans so he could be, I don't he, want them he could be 100% on, on agreeing with you on voting record and everything else and you would still 100% align with you consistently as soon as he's in office not as a Democrat I feel like he's going to vote a Democratic ticket he's, he's going to do gonna what the Democrats him. want he him to do he wouldn't be a Democrat Mark that's yes, what you he don't would. get he would be an independent president no, he would be, be known Democrat. as the first really? independent president really yes. if he runs as a Democrat yes. is a Democratic candidate it's getting on gets the, voted into as a it's Democrat it's getting on the he'd Democratic voting, he'd, ticket Mark a Republican can run as a Democrat a, a, ra- a KKK member can run as a Democrat. In fact, the KKK emerged from the Democratic Party in the 
no, like I know the 20s that. or 30s. But it, it, that's what you don't get. Running as doesn't mean that's the party that you're representing. It means you're getting on their ballot so you can be on the ballot in all 50 states. Do you, do you understand that that's so even more chance, right? uh, hard to believe than Obama's hope and change? And what happened with Obama? No, because I think if that's you, more of a flaw in the system than the candidate. Well, if exactly. You, if you that's what I've been saying the whole time. I'm not talking about Bernie Sanders, the person. If he wants to run as an independent, I would vote for him. Fucking today, tomorrow, yesterday. But I think whatever. what John's point is is that he he really because of the system he can't run as an independent because he won't be able to get yeah. on the ballot in all fifty states, so he won't have a realistic chance of winning because it's a two party system, so not plus, a three party system. By, by Again, running against so I'm Hillary. giving the middle finger to that fucking notion. I'm only going to vote. A th- I promised myself I would never vote for one of the two parties again. I'm only going to vote for a third party. So let, you don't right, 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 Just a technical question, if anybody knows this. So say they go through the whole fucking Democratic primary. Hillary wins the Democratic nomination. They run for president anyway. He runs as an independent. Like, what, what do you do then? I'll vote for him. Well, there you go. That's probably what's going to happen. So well, get your pen ready. No, it's probably not be- because uh, he, he said he's not going to do that because it, the cost <clears throat> is too great. He doesn't have enough money to run as an independent and get on the ballot. He can run and just have it be symbolic. But and, see, that's and have- bullshit. Like, he's already got so much name recognition. He could easily fucking step out now. And just run as, as an not even in any, yeah, as an independent. And people would still fucking vote for him. This is the thing that I don't fucking understand. I, I, why gar- I guarantee like, you if there was an actual, an actual viable independent candidate, I would vote for him. If he stepped out and just voted and just put his name on the ballot as an independent, I would still vote for him. Whether well, he, but, well, he wouldn't not. be on the ballot. That's the point. Because you, every state has its own requirements. So some states <clears> require <throat> 200,000 signatures uh, mm. petition and then 10 other things and 50 other things to get on that ballot so you could write him so in it would have to be like an amazing you can still, you can still write no you can still write him in you can write you him can in make a fucking tv but, commercial or uh, internet website going write me in on your ballot write me in on your ballot and fucking then anyone that wants to write him in writes him in and then that's he that's how he gets elected yeah that doesn't that doesn't work when people how does that not work because, because that's not how voting system. works Mark. because that's not how well then you know what when, fuck voting when people voting can suck my fucking ass when people don't see the name on that on that the chart they that they they don't, they don't vote for that person. You have to. People need to see the name to, to choose them. Usually, so they, they don't know don't about care. write-ins. Then I don't care what happens to those people. All right, they're that fucking stupid. They can fucking get locked up in jail for the rest of their lives for fucking smoking a little weed or whatever the fuck. They're retarded enough to support by n- not to vote. support yeah, to yeah. support by not being able to vote. Like they should. All right, I, I don't want to talk about who uh, you're who you're going to vote I, for anymore. <laughs> I, I do want to. I, I do have one thing that I find interesting about Bernie Sanders. He's the first presidential candidate or president or whatever, or even just political um, officer, whatever figure, politician figure um, that I can think of that is pretty much always mentioned by his fucking first name. People say Bernie. When did that at one ever happen before? The people say Abe, George, Bill. Well, you I, know that I mean that John. Even, well, like people the, never did that. We always so, used to call Clinton Billy. Yeah. 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 No, it's that's true. Um, I guess it's a distinctive enough name that people can can say that and not be misunderstood. The other thing, though, is maybe that it's it, just because people relate to him. Yeah, no, the, and that's uh, yeah. right. Personal. My uh, my question isn't like a negative. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm not I'm not taking a negative. I'm just that that's my right. that was just well, my first thought. Like no, when you when you, when you relate better to somebody, you call them by their first name right. usually. Right, so right. I mean that's our custom in this country anyway. Well, the only the only other thing the, the, there's a possible explanation for that, which is that in this campaign, um, because it's pretty funny actually, because Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton have. 100% name recognition but because their last names are also also have heavy negative connotations Bush and Clinton have heavily negative connotations and disapproval in this well, country that's why you always hear about them as Jeb and Hillary it's, well the posters the, the whole campaign it's Jeb with an exclamation point that's his poster oh yeah. it's Jeb and then Hillary's <laughs> say Hillary Mark and it's just a, another way right, that they're identical right. now Bernie's doing the same thing because his posters say Bernie um, or feel the burn. Feel the burn. But uh, so but, okay. But so, did any politicians <laughs> previous to that do that? I mean, I don't, I don't remember no. seeing Barack. No, <laughs> that wouldn't have been or, a good idea. No. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, no, you're right. That is that's. As a matter of fact, didn't he just shorten it to O? Didn't they just do yeah, the, the O, o yeah, with, yeah, the, the, o, with the flag in it and everything? Yeah, he went the Oprah route. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, though, you if we had examined Obama's voting record before we voted for him we wouldn't have been surprised about how he acted. And that's why the voting record is a good indication of how they will behave in the office. Um, I had a question about the rally. Yeah. So I just wonder what, what do they get from having these rallies? What is the positive or productive thing about having right. one of these rallies because if it's all supporters that go yeah i mean are you the I fbi think and nsa get to in? put Track names you. yeah get get a list of names of people who attended I, the rally and take <laughs> pictures of all of you and right. i think it's that um you, you get media coverage uh for having a rally so the the news stations show up and you get more name recognition and people see that room full of people and they go, wow. And, and they because the press does report how many people showed up, like Trump was in Phoenix last week or whatever. And he got like uh, just under 5000 people showed up, which is quite a few. Um, he sent out like a newsletter in Phoenix about like it was basically like a Nazi rant. It was just like a hateful thing. And, and he got all the 5000 really hardcore flaming conservatives to get come to his rally. Flaming. But Bernie doubled, more than doubled that uh, last that's a, night. That's pretty impressive. He more than doubled Trump. the flaming hatred? <laughs> no. Oh. Flaming. <laughs> um, I do have a, a weird... Do you ever say flaming liberal or is it just flaming. a flaming conservative? I, I, it's the first time I've said it in relation it to flaming. politics at all. I like flaming, man. <laughs> a flaming conservative. So, um, <laughs> Not I, your run of the mill. They're much fancier. <laughs> I do. I do have a, an, a hypothesis. I don't know if it's true. I have. I haven't figured out how to determine if this is true yet. But I think actually that Bernie Sanders, some of his, a good number of his supporters were also supporters of Ron Paul, who who ran as a, well, he ran as a Republican last time, but he ran as a Libertarian in the Libertarian Party before that, and. Um, now, the, the funny thing about that is that Bernie Sanders is a democratic social, a European-style socialist, whereas Ron Paul is a libertarian. Those are literally the opposite ideologies. So one is big government, Yeah, Bernie that's Sanders. a strange crossover if yeah. that's true. That like, what's, what's the common denominator? Right. Is that what you're yeah. going to tell us right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And, and, and so if I'm right that, that there are a lot of crossover uh, fa- fans or supporters of these guys, it, it really shows what's important to those people because they'll take the whole ideology of the candidate and they'll be like, all right, that, that's fine. I don't really agree with that. Like, I don't really agree with socialism or I don't really agree with libertarianism, but it's so important to get what, like what you were saying, Brian, it's so important to get someone in to break out of that box that this establishment and the money involved is such a bad thing that I'll vote for a guy whose ideology I don't really ascribe to. Just that, to get to break the status quo. Yeah. Well, and, and that, so if I I'm, think that comes from Bernie Sanders is mostly talking about, um, even in what he's going to do, about what's wrong with the government. He's not, you know, he's talking about uh, how the government is fucked up. So you're and, saying he, they agree on what's wrong with right, the government. And they agree on what's wrong. And when he's just knocking the government and just saying, this is wrong with it and we need to change it, then all the people that don't want this big government and think government's fucking up, then they go, oh, yeah, that's that sounds good. Now, if he was to say, you know, this is wrong and we need more government to solve the problem and blah, 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 I bet you most of those Ron Paul people wouldn't fucking well, turn tail and run. You, you might be right. There might not be any there. But but he is saying that, though, because he is saying big government. When you no, say single-payer health care. Mark, but when you say single-payer health care. He's not saying, the, John, just like you said, that you need the name in front of you to fucking put the check mark next to. When people hear single-payer health plan, they don't fucking think big government. Um. Well, some of them certainly do. Some of them might. Just like there's some people who don't need a fucking name in front of them to put a check mark next to. There's a lot of stupid people which is what I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you agree in the strangest yeah, way yeah. sometimes. Man, I, I, yeah. Warming my I didn't heart know you were that, agreeing with them either. I'm glad. Agreement. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's the same thing. Like John, John was saying that People need a fucking name in front of them right. to, to put the check mark next to because they're too fucking stupid. But then he's trying to tell me that when they hear the term single payer health plan, they think 
big government. Well, I don't see. I mean, you have. Uh, that's not a logical you, you, fallacy. I'm sorry. I think it is. Not, uh, first of all, I didn't say they needed the name in front of them because they're stupid. I just said no. You didn't just say that, it was because they're stupid, right. but. Give me another reason why they need that. Why they can't <laughs> write it in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> I guess stupid. Uh, well, uninformed. So I yeah, guess uninformed, not stupid. I'm sorry, people. You're uninformed. You're, you're flamingly true. uninformed. <laughs> that's true. There, there's farmers out there who are really, they're geniuses, but they don't know anything about politics. So uninformed is different from stupid. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I, I think even today, farmers are staring at their cell phones out on the tractor. That's true. I believe that. I believe that. There's texting accidents in cornfields. <laughs> Dad, what happened to the scarecrow? <laughs> oh, man, I'm texting your mama. Ran that fucker down. I'm going to try to find out if I can verify that, that little hypothesis, because that would be really interesting. Because, uh, like I said, they are opposite ideologies, and... Uh, like Bernie wants to make 13 million jobs, uh, government jobs, by uh, putting people to work by a huge, uh, like two trillion dollar investment into the infrastructure, bridges, roads, all the things that are falling apart, the railway. He said we want to lead the world in a modern rail system, and then he hit climate change and said we need to make aggressive uh, investments into transitioning away from fossil fuels. So you got a big applause for that. Didn't Obama like, say that too? Yeah. yeah. Well, he has done things, but there, it but hasn't not. been aggressive. It hasn't been like literally like you, you have to, to, to change like the, our, I wouldn't, I would call it soft. Yeah. I mean, I like it's a, just soft, man. To period. change that though, to, to get oh, off that yeah. fossil fuels, it's, it's so, it would be so expensive. Comfortable. He's made comfortable changes. Yeah, oh, changes good. people that we can de- that don't yeah that don't mess up anyone's yeah, way of life. Changes corporations and profits can live with. Because if you if you did the changes you needed, businesses would go out of business. You know, people like bad things would would happen at first because you you'd have to sp- spend so much money to to start transitioning away from that. Um, yeah, it's much better to wait till the last minute. And yeah, he, he did just open up exploratory drilling in a chuck. Well, if chuck it, chuck in, in his defense, if he did you know, make Obama. the changes, uh-huh. if Obama made the changes that he wanted to, and then that and that stuff would stop start happening, you'd see a lot more hatred for him, a lot more people saying yeah. he was a you know Muslim socialist yeah. and destroying the country and blah blah blah. So yeah. Sure, it wouldn't make it wrong though to no no no. It wouldn't right. make it wrong to try to save the planet no, and no, to try no. to live yeah. sustainably. It would just well, make them seem the a little fucking crazier. Issue. But wouldn't well, you? We're, we're not destroying the planet, a. What we're, and we wouldn't be uh, saving the planet. We would be saving ourselves because the planet is going to get along fine without us. Oh yeah. But not the things that live. Unless, unless on we it. stick around to fuck but, it up but real it'll, good, it'll evolve again. Like what you know, cockroaches will turn into stuff. Or, Something else. You know, just like life. Yeah. Just Something like life became. You know. But yeah. don't you think just the fact that we're all these species are dying because of what we're doing is like. The oh, planet no, I, not surviving the, in a way. Right. No, don't get me wrong. I, I am for uh, protecting the environment and, and doing what we can to do it. I'm just saying we should realize that the, the reason we want to do it is to save ourselves. And we're the ones who are really going to be hurt. People who think that like we're damaging the planet somehow and, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to be hurt. Nothing's going to happen to me or my kids or blah, blah, blah. Just the planet, just some far off, you know, glacier that's melting. It's just whatever, you know, big deal. Like, I think they should realize that, no, it's the human race that this is going to protect and help. And not that, anything and, else. And you and, and I have our talked way of about life, that. Too. I told you that's why people don't care because, like he's saying, it's not in their face. Not, they, right. they, 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 don't, they don't see a water crisis because they turn on their tap and water comes out. Right. Because right. they can take a 30-minute shower if they want because they go to the grocery store and there's food there. So yeah. they don't see a food crisis exactly. be, because they're, 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 they see a, a, an extra snowstorm and they're like, well, see, there's no global warming. Yeah. They're just people... They don't know. It doesn't affect them, and they don't. Yeah. They don't do the research, Not so they think, go out of their way. So they don't get that global warming is 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 the equivalent of climate change. When you have these unnatural storms and unnatural events, the, it's it's all related. That the, that doesn't ever sink in because they didn't weather. do the research because they're they're watching the fucking Kardashians right. or 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 Caitlyn Jenner getting an SB or 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 a twelve because inning or a twelve inning baseball game. 
<laughs> they're just doing stuff they'd rather do than think about how fucked up the world's getting. Yeah. Which is understandable. Yes, we all do it. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to figure out if that's true about Ron Paul and, and Bernie. If it is, it's really interesting. It shows that people just are sick of this this bullshit, and uh, they don't really care <laughs> what the idea... Because that's the thing. The more I... Well, that would actually be nice to know. There's a lot of problems with socialism, and I'm not a socialist, but... I'm supporting Bernie because of his the honesty in his voting record and everything. So and his so. programs would they necessarily co- cost the government more money, or would it just be reallocated? It would cost the government a lot more money. Lot more uh, money. Where he would get he, that, that we don't he, have. He'd, he'd basically be like Franklin Roosevelt in a lot of ways. Oh, like the New and a lot deal. of his programs, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Which you know did a lot of good for the country. Well, no, right. But at the at the same time, also we were at, well, I guess we're at war now too. So I was gonna say we are at war, yeah. but yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Well, it's war to the guys that are over there. I'll tell well, you that. that. Yeah, uh, there's no such thing as pseudo war if you I'm got boots on the devalue ground. I'm right. not yeah. troops. I'm just saying, you know, necessarily what we're where we're at and what we're doing isn't. Exactly. Well, it's not. A, it's not World a conventional war, war. It's not like well, tank no division. There's no yeah. draft. Well, and there's yeah. no tank divisions facing off no. against each other in huge yeah. fleets of bombers, fucking carpet bombing cities. It's not. Well, what I meant by that was the so during World War II, the government took a lot of the resources and basically used them towards the war effort, right. and they basically uh, sucked up a lot of you know everything. Uh, Businesses and whatever, and made yeah, them car made, factories, yeah, made tanks. Stuff, right? You know, you used so to make if you tried license to, plates. If, now you make bullets. So if Bernie was going to try to do the New Deal now, and then try to do that same thing, well, make private business like, and corporations oh, like yeah. well, it was also it was, yeah, it'd be a lot harder. I'm sure it was the yeah. war, but it was yeah. also it'd be a lot harder. It was the depression. It was the depression no, that said, was, told was, everyone that the depression this was unchecked, before that. No, it was. It was the 30s. It was 10 years, 1929 to the beginning of World War II, or actually through the end of World War II. And so um, they, everyone was looking at this, and, and it was, of course, a stock market crash, which uh, f- precipitated by bank, uh, you know, financial, ins- the behavior of financial institutions, just like in 2007. So people looked at that, and the, the robber baron ages of the, these corporations, these, the steel magnates and all these guys, um, Rockefellers and all this stuff, and... The There's, reason that the monopoly laws were enacted, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Glass, uh, Glass-Steagall <coughs> was the act that was that was were, that said that commercial banks could not also be um, investment banks. So a bank that takes your my your and I deposits cannot also be an investment bank, which gambles on things like securities and prices and futures, because. There's something ethic, be, right. There's something ethically wrong about taking Brian's gambling, m- invest, gambling yeah. exactly for profit, and so that act uh, protected that. And of course, Bill Clinton over oversaw the repeal of that law in 1999, <laughs> yeah. and then a few years later, the economy collapses, the second worst since the Depression. God. Hum. So yeah. that's why I follow people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. Because they want to, and he talked about breaking up the banks too. He said, "If I'm president, we're gonna have a, have a plan huge. to break those banks up." Because you have to do it while the economy's okay. You can't break them up after they've gone insolvent and the, yeah. the, everything is in the shitter. That's when panic sets in. So you have to do it while the economy's okay. Break those banks up so that they can never precipitate another crisis like that. Yeah, maybe put some of those criminals in jail too. Yes. Yeah. Where they instead of belong. instead of appointing them to high positions yeah. in the government, thanks yeah, Obama. Let, yeah. So yeah, Trump comes out th- this clown, and uh, man, the, the Republican field is a mess. It's just a mess. Fifteen candidates. Trump's in the lead right now. That will change it's, by it's, they Friday. They should come to the debate and all pile out of a VW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just a fucking clown <laughs> car clown full car. of full of clowns. <laughs> um. So. Trump. I'll pile out of the VW at the debate. That would just be the best. I'd actually watch it if I knew they were going to come that way. Trump, is he running just to shake things I up? I don't just know. To, I can't figure out. Because he likes out. attention. I can't or? figure out what Some he's Some people doing. think that he's a plant like <laughs> for the Democrats. Yeah. To try to... Making the Republicans, make the Republicans look, Republicans bad, look bad, bad, which he is. Screw them up. And, uh, and, of course, he donated to Hillary's 2000-something Senate campaign. 
which most people That's don't know. He, he's he's socially liberal on like most issues. Like he's written wow. in his book quotes about gay marriage and single payer health care, like crazy liberal things that he supported in the past. But now he's a Republican because he hates Mexican people. Okay. And that has rocketed him to the front of the pack with 17 <laughs> oh percent beating uh, Jeb by like 5 percent right now. By Friday, that will be gone because of his comments this last weekend. Uh, quote. Because Chapo's going to kill him. Yeah. Oh, that Chapo. too. Yeah. Trump said of John McCain, quote, he's not a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. So <laughs> that's, that's what, so brilliant. That's what Trump said about yeah. uh, McCain. And that, that, that was finally the thing that allowed <laughs> all. How do you say I'm a fucking idiot in three sentences? Yeah. Yeah. My right campaign there. is Bingo. over. Some someone someone tweeted him, "You're fired." <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. But but then at the same time, didn't uh, McCain? And maybe this was a while ago. Say something about Carter being the worst president. I don't know. And then, well, I, I'm saying that I saw this. It was mm-hmm. like a stupid meme, or whatever. It said John McCain um, or Jimmy Carter's response to John McCain saying he was the worst president was, "Well, at least I'm not a warmonger." And you know, and I created more jobs in my presidency. Oh, and that like and no shots were fired. During yeah, no my shots were fired right. during yeah. my. I saw that time. too. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah. Are you saying that's a similar? I'm saying that whereas Trump might have uh, tried to smear Jim McCain's name and try to make him look like a clown, you know, an idiot, and then in turn look like a clown. John McCain kind of looked like a clown by himself. By saying Pre- Carter was the worst. Yeah, president. John McCain hasn't needed any help looking like a clown no, no, since I, he I said, know, "My running no, mate is Sarah Palin." Like that, no. right then he could have just put yeah, on really. a wig, painted his face, and got some floppy shoes. No, but I'm I'm just saying. So, like, and, and not to say they're like this, but McCain and and Trump, like Trump, saying bad stuff about McCain is kind of like I don't know. Mussolini saying bad stuff about, about Hitler, Hitler like, yeah, no, or no. vice versa. Or Hitler, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Hitler said yeah. B- Mussolini was a bully. Like when they first <laughs> met, he bullied Hitler a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He didn't well, like it, him. He just needed. Yeah, him. That, that Italian flamboyance with the German reserve probably not a good mix. Like, hey Hitler, come on. Like, yeah, what are you doing? When I when I was reading about that, Poland they said person. he kind of Hitler didn't didn't like him that much because he he bullied him a bit. Yeah. Um it's just this whole and then he made it worse Trump by saying why do you go after McCain anyway yeah, why do well, you? the reason is that um, uh, when Trump had those 5,000 people at his rally in Phoenix John McCain tweeted that he had quote fired up all the crazies <laughs> So McCain was saying that Trump's support was just among like madmen, like you know the militia. Well, and, that's like, like, anti-immigration. That's not, that's not far off. No, it's no, not. No, that's that's not far he, off. How, how did he? You're he, in the nine ring at the very least. He rocketed to the front of the pack just by saying something really, really controversial and mean about Mexicans. He didn't say I'm going to create jobs <clears throat> by this, this, and he just said something mean, and that that all of those supporters showed up. Just for that, yeah. So but that kind of tells you, but, who, well, who uh, those who they are. are. Yeah, well, the that, that's that's right. true. But <laughs> also, also, John, your theory about your your theory and my theory about uninformed people mm-hmm. also rings true. And like, it's Trump. How many people know the name Trump? Yeah, that's so you just throw that name Trump out, and everyone's like, "Oh, oh, Trump! Yeah, yeah, I know Trump. I vote for Trump. Sure, blah, Trump. Yeah, you know." He's uh, got that but show. that support was You're a, fired. That's, that, yeah, he, he can fire Putin. He can that, fire. Yeah. Yeah. that jump in support was a direct <clears throat> result, though, in terms of timeline of of him making those comments about Mexicans. Yeah, people, didn't he make those comments right when he jumped in? No, he made them two weeks ago or whatever. I thought that was when he said he was going to be a candidate. No. no dude, that's what made El Chapo escape from prison. He's coming to kill <laughs> He's Trump. He's coming to kill him. Yeah. Um, Did you- and, and so John McCain, uh, this is quoting a Washington Post article, McCain was shot down over North Vietnam in 1967, suffered a broken leg and two broken arms while ejecting from his fighter jet. He was taken prisoner and received little medical treatment for his wounds, instead enduring almost daily beatings and interrogations by his guards. He lost 50 pounds in five and a half years of captivity. Uh, so you know you don't want awful. McCain in charge of health care. 
They want health care? I'll show them what kind of health care I got. <laughs> <laughs> He has a high threshold. And have band-aids when I was... Uh, Make sure that nurse knows kung fu. Can beat him every day. And, and spent much of that time in solitary confinement in a uh, windowless room, which is one of the worst things in the world. At the, at the Hanoi Hilton, right? Yeah, I guess. Did and you get to meet Hanoi Jane near the end? I don't know. Did she gonna... come through? <laughs> he probably didn't get to meet her, though. Brian's still angry at Jane Fonda. <laughs> I'm not digging traitors of any variety from any from any era. His injuries remain visible four decades later. He still walks with a slight limp and cannot raise his arms above his shoulders. As for Trump, Trump did not serve in Vietnam because of several student deferments and a medical deferment. He told reporters that he had a bone spur in his foot, oh but did God. not recall which foot had been injured. <laughs> Unquote. That's quite an injury. So all the Republican candidates finally got a chance to, to denounce this dummy and, and say, they, this is unacceptable. You're, you're being mean to a war hero, and you, know, you should withdraw from the race immediately. I know which foot my bone spurs in. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, right now. Uh, yeah, Romney, Kerry, they, John Kerry, my bone Secretary spurs of not State. My foot. <laughs> they all uh, denounced him. <laughs> and, uh, so I don't know I, what you freaks are talking about. <laughs> So, like I said, I think by the end of the week, he will not, no longer be leading the pack because of that. That's a comment that can take you down, basically. So do you think he'll see it through to the, the primary, even? Um, yeah, he'll see it through to the primaries. He'll stay in, and then he'll withdraw a few months after that. Yeah, his ego will carry him that far on yeah. its own, just and by his itself. Money, yeah. And he's saying that he will run as a third party if he doesn't win the Republican nomination. What's he going to call his party? But afterwards, it'll just be his hairpiece running. The fire yeah. party. <laughs> The Trump. It's just Trump. Like, Trump. he names everything. Right. Trump. It's the Donald party. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go with the first name thing this yeah. time around. Yeah. The first Donald. name thing is trending. It's Donald. trending. First names are trending. It's the Donald party. In political parties. The Donald. <laughs> the Donald Duck? Yeah, he really should stop quacking, though. He's not <laughs> helping himself. The one candidate that didn't uh, denounce Trump was uh, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Who has perhaps the he's the loudest defender of Trump's remarks about immigrants and met privately with him a few days ago at Trump Tower in New York, refusing to condemn Trump. Ted Cruz, Texas. <laughs> I'm out, man. I'm done right there. Like you can drop the mic after saying those two things, dude. Ted Cruz, Texas. Also, you guys have probably seen uh, this in the news that the New Horizons spacecraft reached Pluto, the former planet, after a almost 10-year journey in space. Space. <laughs> and I was telling Brian, the cost of the entire mission was less than the cost of one NFL stadium. That's hard to That includes firing a rocket from Cape Canaveral. Yeah, and but can designing it, catch a, can it. it catch a football? <laughs> <laughs> Big fucking deal, right? <laughs> I heard it was less than feeding a family of four Peter Pipe for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted pizza on the way over here. Oh, sorry. That's good. That's that's uh, edifying uh, information. <laughs> I'm really hungry. I'm surprised you guys can't hear my stomach growling on the mic. Uh, it's only like two. You feet want away. half a sandwich? Half that, a, did you find it on the bus? Like oh. I was thinking. Of that. <laughs> No, I bought it. You seen that Rob Lowe commercial? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Find it on the bus. <laughs> um, Am I at 17 yet? I said I was only going to say 17 things. <laughs> <laughs> I come up close to my limit. It's devolving, so. Yeah, the other big thing in the news is that, that uh, El Chapo, Joaquin Guzman, the Mexican drug kingpin. Uh, nice fella. Better known by his nickname El Chapo, meaning shorty, ended his brief tenure as Mexico's wealthiest and most famous prison inmate last Saturday night. And they said he wouldn't escape this time. They oh, would it, not let him escape yeah, this time. Yeah, it was a huge, uh, it was a very stern promise by President Peña Nieto of Mexico, who uh, was elected on one platform alone, which is aggressive, you know, chasing down the cartels and shutting them down. But they, and so these elite Mexican Marines uh, caught the guy in a gunfight and everything in, in some hotel. 
and uh so the 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 video well he's uh his cartel is the Sinaloa cartel he's ranked as the 14th wealthiest person in the world so that must mean he has like hundreds of billions, billions. which also or not means, hundreds of billions so that's billions means he's more wealthy than Trump oh way more wow way more you're not going to keep him in a mexican prison <laughs> Yeah, so there's two maximum security prisons in Mexico, and um, he broke out of the other one in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's got this one too. Um, he just there's like a video there's a video of him in the shower, and he ducks behind this little wall where the the wall supposedly there for privacy, like a half wall. Yeah, yeah. he ducks behind it, and then he's just gone. gone. And there was a tunnel in the shower floor uh, that was exactly five feet six inches tall, which is his height, so he could stand up comfortably in it. It was uh, nothing but the best. There really. were yeah, <laughs> thousands of tons of dirt would have had to been removed from this tunnel, which was uh, half as long as the Holland Tunnel. It's an extremely long tunnel underground with like light bulbs and ventilation through My PVC God. piping, and uh, it comes up like a mile down the road or whatever in some shack. There's like a house, and the, the hole is in the floor of that house, and that's where he but came how out. How long was he in? Jail? Yeah, in prison. Um, He's been this in time. since... Not long. I don't even know. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I not, don't, no, I don't know. Yeah, not I mean, long. I mean, because he broke out in 2001 the last time. I don't remember yeah, yeah, when yeah. he got recaught. It was so. very recently. I just wonder, so how long did it take him to make this amazing tunnel? It's like... Well, he, you know, it was his guys on the outside, apparently. And, and everyone pretty much knows that someone in the prison was... A lot of people working in the prison were involved in this, but oh, no one's been arrested. So they, it's, it's very strange. And it's, I mean, that's actually pretty common. Like, they found, uh, I think it was in the 90s, they found a tunnel in Nogales that went from... Sonora's side, to Mex- uh, Arizona side. Oh yeah, I remember and there was that. a drug, the drug tunnel, tunnel. They, yeah, would use. So was, I yeah. mean, that's been something that the cartels have been in use for. Yeah, for a long time. They actually so. they have uh, submarines. They have a uh, they built a, a billion dollar submarine. It's like a kind of a makeshift uh, sub, but it works and it fits like ten people in it, <laughs> and it's a legitimate thing. Like, it's not easy to build a, a submarine. No kidding. Um, and they're also starting to use I drones. I can't build a birdhouse, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Submarine's well beyond me. Uh, so nobody knows how this was done without attracting tons of attention, without trucks leaving the area full of dirt. Yeah, how is that possible? I actually can build a, a birdhouse. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Not like a really exquisite one, but your average run at the mill. Yeah, four walls, four walls, a and a roof hole. and a hole. <laughs> yeah, with a little peg out front for you for you's to sit on. <laughs> for you to sit on. Did they ever use the peg? <laughs> All those pegs just wasted. <laughs> wasted peg. That iconic picture of the birdhouse. That never gets used. Right? Yeah. A lot of them even don't even use the birdhouse. Birdhouse. <laughs> they just sit there empty. There's like a fucking spider and like four beetles in there that flew in and couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> four dead beetles. A pile of June bugs. Birdhouse is like making a cloud for a person to live on. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Neither does that analogy. <laughs> How far in are we, man? Uh, we're, we're good. We're, we're almost at an hour. We'll wrap it up soon. No, I'm just wondering. Like, I, I'm, I'm hanging on, man. I said I was only going to say 17 things. Yeah. So did he tweet El Chapo his thing too? Yeah. I'm trying to find that. One thing that El Chapo said about Donald Trump, because of Trump's uh, anti-Mexican comments. One thing El Chapo said was, I would kick his ass. <laughs> um, I think the other thing that he said, probably they're not going to print it in this article. Um, wh- what did you What did you well, hear that he said? Well, Heide, this woman I work with, she showed it to me on the internet oh. when it first happened. Okay. And she's like, she she's like, he, that's nothing he would ever say. Like those words don't sound like something, you know. He was, I don't know how she knows. El that. Chapo. Uh, yeah. She's okay. like, Chappie would never. <laughs> <say that. laughs> Chappie. So well, maybe it was like broken in Spanish. Well, it's you know? translated. She, she's yeah. from Spanish, uh, from Mexico. Not that it means that she knows him or anything, but she said it's just the, the tweet doesn't sound like something that a uh, Mexican would say. Hey, He's probably, I don't know. You know. She said it's. She showed it to me and said something about him being. I, he was going to kill him, and and because of what he said about Mexicans, and that 
Here's he called a, him a white faggot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here it says another thing that El Chapo said about uh, Trump in Spanish was keep fucking around and I'm going to make you swallow your fucking words. So that's pretty um, mean, too. So the FBI supposedly was going to investigate this because the of prison break or the no, tr- his, the tweet the tweet yeah they've he reported it to Trump reported it to the FBI I bet and, he did and then <laughs> and then they were going to maybe take away his Twitter account yeah <laughs> they found well, that he was uh, yeah being a troll he's yeah. trolling <laughs> Trump stop trolling Trump on Twitter <laughs> I yeah I, I think a lot of us are surprised when we learn that like ISIS has a Facebook page like it's, it's like weird. what. It, really? Like, like how, who fucking likes that page? Like, was it, I'm gonna, <laughs> like, where is it coming? Can't you trace the IP address? Like, well, yeah, but really. come on, there's God pages, there's devil pages, there's like some fucking 13 year old kid could make a goddamn ISIS page on Facebook. No, but there's ones that are attributed to them that where they they claim the crimes that they're, they're, they're you know they're they. That doesn't violate Facebook's terms and conditions of <laughs> yeah. community. But you I can't mean, have like, a female nipple on there. But you yeah. can have. You ISIS. can be a terrorist. God forbid for for a bunch of reasons. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Yeah, the, the DEA is so pissed right now because they wanted Mexico to extradite El Chapo to here, um, where he most likely would not have been able to build a tunnel under the ma- Supermax uh, prison. But uh, they wouldn't do it because they wanted. They said, "Hey, we can hold him. This jail is impregnable," and uh, which they're still saying. The guy, <laughs> the, the secure, the, like the guy who's. Like their their defense department guy in Mexico is saying, you know, that prison. He just went on this bizarre rant when they were interviewing him, talking about how great the prison was. He and he never qualified it and was like, except for that whole tunnel out of the shower yeah. to the shack thing. How, how the solid. most dangerous man yeah, in the world solid. got out solid. twice. Super solid, super max. Did just that one. <laughs> that one. He was flaw. in denial, I guess. <laughs> Just that one, well, one the, little, the, little the prison warden, problem. The prison warden said he knew it was a bad idea to show Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> last year. Right. I should have never allowed that yeah. Raquel Welch yeah. poster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being obtuse. What did you say? The uh, Speaking of the FBI, there's another debate out there right now, which uh, I think, Mark, you're going to feel passionately about. It's the encrypted phone debate. So... Um, Technology for uh, end-to-end encryption on uh, smartphones, which means basically you can encrypt a phone so that no law enforcement agency or anyone could ever really get into it. The algorithms are too difficult or whatever, and uh, you're never going to access that information without the consent of the owner. Um, So that technology has been really taking off, and companies like Apple and and all these phone makers, big big companies have noticed that, and so they've jumped on now, and they've they've started advertising, hey, the iPhone 6 is encrypted, and, you know, no one will ever be able to read your – or get in here and look at your information without your permission. Um, But the FBI and other law enforcement agencies are not happy about that at all because uh, they want to be able to read your stuff when they arrest you. They want to go in your phone and know what you've been doing and saying where you've been and all that stuff. So uh, FBI Director James Comey uh, says he wants encryption services to create secret backdoors and key escrows for their products. So agencies like the FBI can get emergency access to data critical for fighting crime and protecting national security. So key escrows and backdoors are a way that, say you, Christine, you you murder someone and they arrest you and they have your phone, but there's a password on it and it's uh, encrypted um, so they can't find out what they need, evidence. So if they have a backdoor or a key escrow, they can just call Apple (laughs) or your your company, your phone company, and uh, get, they they show them a warrant and, and they get your that little some number that gets you into the phone without your password so that's what the fbi wants all phones to be built with but that's you know these are services we pay for private services yeah. how, how should that even be legal how should the government be able to dictate yes. that? we're paying for a service they shouldn't be able to just go in and get your records right because because there's no chance they'll abuse that no, <laughs> no. not them no. no is that what they use for jared from subway <laughs> Bust him with his <laughs> child porn. Well, they they didn't they didn't find anything. They did it. Well, they didn't arrest him. He hasn't oh. been arrested. They they raided his oh, house. Right, right. But, um, they went to Jared's. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
this is uh, this has been a fun show. I yeah. just want to say so far, it really has for me. You, you guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> So it's currently not happening. No, and but but the FBI. Well, that's is, what they claim, right? Yeah. They he, they're they're personally this director and others are personally pressuring the companies. They're saying you do this, build these back doors in, and the companies so far apparently have been saying no. So that, well, that's, they have a lot of power, right? The corporations, the big ones, they should. Yeah, I mean, if there's no law, they don't have to do what a di- right. FBI director says. So well, how does the Patriot Act? Or- besides, some of those guys are probably fucking criminals too. Like the dudes running these companies, they're like, wait, I don't want you having the number to my phone, fellas. Right. Like, I do some weird stuff on here. I buried six people in the last Others. two years <laughs> that were uh, yeah. holding up some stuff we needed to get through, yeah. and I don't, I don't need that ever coming up Plus again. Plus the yeah, mass well, graves like, of the child slaves that build the farm. Yeah, yeah, right. like, yeah. Well, not well, to mention like, those. So, I don't know if you guys have been following that prostitution uh, ring thing here in Tucson. No. The massage parlor. I and did those, hear uh, about it, yeah. Happy uh, Endings Massage yeah. on yeah. Oracle. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know where it was. Never, no, I've never been there or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, no but, uh, I go a different place. <laughs> But because so the cops went to this place and they got the cell phones of like the woman who ran the business and maybe some other people. And so then they had a, the names and contacts of everyone in her phone. Mm. And maybe it was a couple of phones. I don't really remember. I read a little article but, about it somewhere. <clears throat> but so then that was public record. And um, the bunch of newspapers in town. Um, got the names from the, the police and nobody that I know of ran like uh, the whole list of names but they would talk about it and they would say including you know a fireman and a couple of police and blah 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 this person that person whatever they said I don't think they mentioned any names yet they could if they wanted but they hadn't yet but then um, they they had to They can't mention now, like, so there's a law saying that if it's a a public record, you can't keep that away from the press. You have to give those public records to the press. But there's also a law saying if it's, um, if there's names of police in it, until the investigation is completed, you, you can't reveal the names of the police. Oh my God. So police are protected under that, legally under that, but no one else is. As that's another. Policies. That's another thing Bernie said. He's, he, you know, he said I know a lot. Of, he was the uh, mayor of Burlington, so he worked with the chief of police and everything. He knew a lot of police. Said they're mostly great guys and they're brave men and women and blah blah blah. He said, but if a police officer breaks the law in this country, they need to be held accountable. And he got huge cheers for that. So, I think everyone would agree with that. <laughs> no, not no. quite. No. Well, I think they should be held accountable, even to a higher. Uh, standard than other people yeah. because they're supposed to be the people that are upholding the law. They should know the fucking law better than anybody else. Yeah, and, when, and when they give you a ticket or arrest you, they're, it's, ignorance is never, uh, you know, an excuse. excuse. Yeah. Because they have more the power, also. They should no, have right. The, more that's why they get away. Yeah. But yeah, they have more power, so they should have more responsibility. Yep. Definitely. <clears throat> have you heard about that Samsung television that? A new television that has a voice recognition. No. Well, supposedly there's a privacy policy when you buy the TV because with the voice recognition, it has to, of course, recognize commands or whatever. Yeah. But it is running constantly and recorded. Oh, right. Yeah, well, yeah. even when it's turned off. Just the audio? or the, is it, is Well, it, it hears. It's yeah, like it hears. It hears everything. And it, it does go to a third oh, party. Man. It goes to a third party. Mm-hmm. Uh and I'm um, so like, creepy. that is so creepy. Well, the Xbox, the new Xbox One. Isn't that the same thing? Well, it was, but they changed it. They Because there's a camera on, in the machine, you know, built in for you to do those games where you, like, stand up and move around. Right. But uh, <laughs> the, that camera, when before it was released, they, they were like, oh, yeah, and by the way, the camera's always on. Yeah. Bye. Even, yeah. When, even when the Xbox is off somehow. Yeah, that's like, the what? same with this TV. Yeah. Only the audio. Well, at least with the video camera, you can just put a piece of duct tape over it. Yeah. You Unless you're playing, yeah. Also, all it's ever going to see is what you're doing on your couch. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, as long as you keep your negative activities to... Not the couch. The bedroom. Yeah. Don't have the but Xbox the Samsung or the bedroom. thing, that's pretty weird. Because it does go, Why does it it goes to, to be a, a negative activity. Yeah. I, I can think of some pretty positive activities that I don't want the whole world watching. Right. Good point. Yeah. So I don't know what, who the third party is, but it's pretty weird. 
super weird. Yeah. Depending on what's on the camera, it might actually be. Oh no, the a voice party recognition one. There. Oh, the voice recognition. Because I, I, I think voices are as distinctive as no, going to faces. Yeah, I'll tell you a story a about voice, party, man. Though. I, I worked at the school for the deaf and blind. Oh, not so. Hold on. <clears throat> so I, I meet this kid. His name's his name's Manny. School for the deaf and the blind. S- school for the deaf and the blind. I meet a blind kid named Manny, mm-hmm. and this is about anyway about fifteen years later. I see him for the second time in another in another setting, and he he called me by name. He said, "Is that Brian Richter?" And I'm like, "Do I know you, man?" Yep. And he said, "I recognize your voice." Yep. And I'm like, "You remember my voice?" I said, "I, ha- I haven't seen you in." 10, 15 years, man. Like, yeah. We talked like once or twice. He's like, yeah, I just recognize your voice. Like, they, So, yeah, they're very, they have to be very distinct. They're extremely distinct because when I watch uh, like a lot of like, comedy cartoons, cartoon shows, and they'll have like guest comedians, you voice them. actors, I always know. I'm like, oh, that's the guy from this. And it's not even a guy that I know very well. As soon as I hear that voice, I'm like, oh, that's the guy from that other show that we saw a couple times. Yeah, I heard Jeff Bridges on a commercial the other day. I'm like, oh, that's Jeff Bridges. Yeah, yeah. and that's why they can do that. The, the Gene Hackman did some commercials a while back, yeah. and like Alec Baldwin, but, but his voice is so... Morgan Freeman's doing a bunch now. Yeah. Has, you know what? I even, when I worked for some attorneys, I you was know your the favorite receptionist. Is. I, some people would freak out because I got to know people's voices, uh, and I'd be yeah. like, hi, so-and-so, and yeah. I'd be like, oh my God, how did you know it was me? I'm like, I can tell by your voice. Yeah. You know, and they're and it happened a lot. I couldn't really recognize people's McConaughey's voices. McConaughey's commercials are the coolest, though. Oh, my God. I'll do it to be cool. <laughs> yeah. What? Jim Carrey's. Cadillac Jim Carrey's. Commercials. Did you see the spoof that Jim Carrey did of that commercial? No. Oh, my God. Watch it after this on the internet. It's All right. so funny. I won't ruin it for you. Watch the whole thing. <laughs> I can I'll do it to be cool. <laughs> No. What commercial is that? <laughs> Matthew Lincoln. McConaughey's Lincoln commercials, man. He does wow. this like this like sexy whispering draw. I, I've been driving Lincoln for a long time. <laughs> I don't do it to be cool. I yeah. do it because it was trendy. It's like he's having a transcendental crisis, but it's all about Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I did it because it because it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna die when you oh see Jim Carrey. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's about it. Pope Francis, Bernie Sanders mentioned Pope Francis and said, he said, by the way, God bless Pope Francis. <laughs> and everyone went nuts. And uh, Is he, wait, Bernie Sanders, is he um, Jewish? Jewish right? yeah, yeah, he's Jewish. He would be the first Jewish president. We've only had one Catholic president, so that seems kind of far-fetched. Was that Kennedy? Yeah. yeah. Only one ever was not a Protestant Christian. Weird. <laughs> If, well, if you ask certain no, people now we've had a Muslim weird. president too. Oh yeah, we've had yeah. a Muslim. No, yeah. the, the, the fact that he said the, there were early early on presidents who were not that's Protestant true. Christian as you know them today. Well, yeah, I think there were deists yeah, who yeah. are not right. not anything like that's true. What you think a Protestant Christian? Is. Yeah, but I will. I don't know this for sure, but I would be willing to bet you that all of them, once they took office, did align with a, a Protestant sect and, and went to a church on, on certain occasions huh. for holidays. I, I, I'm willing presidents? to bet. I, I don't know that because, I mean, how, I don't think that was as big of a deal back then as it is now. Uh, no religion I mean? was like... Everything. No, but early on, all the people that came over here were f- usually freeing religious persecution. So, oh, but they were extremists. They're pure. No, there there or, were extremists, but not all, not everybody that came over here was a super no. Bible believing. No, Jesus, blah blah blah. They so, weren't. and and the early presidents weren't they deists because they didn't want to have they didn't want religion involved in government, and that was yeah. a problem where they well, came from. Th- that just, that yeah. and I think Christianity is a lot different today than it was back then as well. I it just wasn't, read it st- wasn't as political. I just read a story about the Pope like yeah. apologizing to uh for the role that the church played in the genocide of the Native American. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, and now uh Pope Francis released what's called an encyclical, which is a, like a message from the Pope. And uh it's also kind of a declaration of, of rules for the church too. And uh Well, uh, it was all about climate change, and here's a quote from him. Uh, The urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole family together to seek a sustainable and integral development, for we know that things can change. And here's my favorite part. The earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So. I like him. Yeah. Mm. 
And he had a conservative uh, cardinal come out against him pretty hardcore after that who uh, said his, what he said is that it's not the place of the church to talk about science. Or, but he's a climate change denier and two years ago mm. did a speaking Except conference. Except when I want to deny right. it. Oh yes. Yeah. Then it's our place then to talk about science. Right. You're right, though, dude. It's never your place to talk about science. <laughs> you only read one book. Yeah. <laughs> Does it talk about, I don't know, does it talk about the the earth? much in the bible yeah it does it says we're supposed to be good stewards of the earth and animals and you know everything else i just want to get fail oh yeah yeah. big fail big fail yeah yeah. well it also says uh to have dominion over the creatures of the earth but that doesn't mean a negative but it it says we have dominion over them and and to use them as we see fit but it also it it also says in there that we're going to be judged for what how we used it Hmm. and how we use our resources and how we use any of the yeah. gifts that so God has given us. So it basically does say that in the Bible. Yeah, so if we squander shit and fuck it up, then we're going to be judged for it. I'm we're sure. headed that way. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure ancient... <laughs> like one of those Mad Max trucks with the pedal down. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure ancient peoples like, uh, could appreciate sort of pollution and stuff on a, on, on their, in their own way because if you live in a small area that, that's urban or has a lot of towns and cities... You could see people ruin the place you grew yeah. up in. You could see forests get cut down, clear cut, but you know, back then the way, you know. so because people lived in such a smaller sphere, they might have had a feeling for ruining. You, there, there's still pollution. They they might have thrown all their poop into like one swamp or something and ruined it. You, you know, the water source. Yeah, yeah, yeah ruin the water. So they probably had a concept of that even back then. Hmm. Um, what else? So I just read something interesting this morning. Um, it was on addictinginfo.com, which I don't know exactly what that website, how trustworthy it is or whatever it is. But supposedly they found a mass grave in Texas. Um, That's true. That the government is saying, uh, it's really, it's nothing. Don't you don't, don't worry mm-hmm. about it. It's, and who was in the mass grave? Well, supposedly it's undocumented um, people, migrants, that have come over and then died in the in their trek over here in the right. desert or whatever. Oh. So who's burying but, yeah. them? The um, the agency, the border, border patrol, patrol, I think, I was think. was taking them and putting them in mass graves and bags wow. and then throwing them in this mass grave, one on top of another. But so, uh, supposedly in this article, it also said that most of the people that they've gotten have contacted border patrol before they died, and then or or some agency, and then that agency waited. A good enough period of time till they would die before they would go out to get them so they could have rescued them gone oh. out and gotten wow. these people That's even worse while they were that still is. alive they chose to wait a long enough period of time till they were sure they were dead then went out and got them That's awful. well uh yeah and they yeah they're not the, super humane yeah yeah the response of that uh, that they made was uh we didn't break the law in any way which i'm sure is true because right, right. they said it so many times yeah that we didn't must, break the law in yeah, any way you're allowed to in other words if you bury if you find a dead foreign person dead foreigner you can do such and such with them apparently but but the thing is it is a mass grave um you know it's something that uh, most people in political office in texas i guess knew about and so wow. even if, you know, there's, there's kind of a big temptation then, like, you know, you know about a mass grave where people are just throwing people and nobody really cares. You got a political enemy or someone that you want not yeah. around anymore. You know, you know about know, that mass grave. You know where you can dump them. <laughs> that's wow, true. that's frightening. So how, I wonder why they don't send the bodies back to Mexico. Too much money. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We send the live ones. It just back. seems weird mm-hmm. that like you, that, that's just. Well, that's that's why it seems like, yeah, you know, we send the live ones back. So maybe they're trying to keep costs down by not going out to get them until they're dead. Well, and, and they don't have to ship them burying them that? in a cemetery or cremating them either. They save on that by throwing them in a pile. Like, it's uh, mm. awful. Yeah, I read that. That's really dark. <coughs> it's Give us your sick, your weak, your yeah. tired, your hungry. We'll put them in a mass <laughs> grave yeah. for you. We got a hole dug already in uh, Texas. <coughs> yeah, uh, Jade Helm 15, the military exercise spanning five states in the American Southwest, is underway now. If you haven't heard about this, it's you know thousands of troops are out there running around, you know, war games and practicing and everything. Obama invaded Texas. Right. And this conspiracy <laughs> theory came up in Texas that uh, 
Obama was going to invade Texas. This was a special place in the, my state, heart. the state of Texas. <laughs> Which, to which Brian said, "Because he's a Five Guys fan, it's it's he's one of the dumbest to, things I've ever heard." He's trying United to shut down Whataburger and yeah, get Five Guys in Texas. The United States invading the state of Texas. That's part of the United which States. Which is which? The state of Texas represents. I don't know if everybody out there knows this. For you, Jade Helm freaks, the state of Texas represents one of the fifty stars that are on the American flag. Yes, you're absolutely <laughs> um, right. It's part of the union. That has um, been confirmed. It, like if you Texas were saying Jade Helm were like if you were if your conspiracy was that Jade Helm were staging in Texas to invade Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we could buy that conspiracy theory. Right. But the United Forget States invading one of its states <laughs> where it already has several military federal military bases, Fort Hood's there's tank division there. Have, have you, have you ever drank time. Lone Star beer? I um, have. I have National Beer of Texas. The National Beer of Texas. Is it good? We actually, I was on a scavenger hunt with these guys once, and we couldn't find a Lone Star. These were my dad's friends. I was a child, and we couldn't find a Lone Star beer can. It was part of the scavenger hunt, so they 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 drove to the dump, <laughs> and I, I went in there and I got this rusty ass can, and they brought that back with the contention that it was the original Lone Star <laughs> beer can. It's the first one. They sent us over fences to steal a ball from a little kid. We needed a red rubber ball. This guy stops. He's like, "Hey, he's like, go get that ball from that kid." <laughs> like literally, my buddy jumps the fence, grabs the ball from the kid. We go. Oh, nice. You see, there's a theme developing, man. I come by all of it honestly, dude. <laughs> These guys were so much fun, man. They were the best babysitters ever, dude. Um, yeah, so the the Jade Helm thing, I, I just noticed this Texas. today. Um, I went to the store and got a Gatorade. I don't know. I haven't heard anyone talking about this, so I know it's a cover-up. Gatorade now is only 28 <laughs> ounces. It used to be 32. It's only 28 now. Four ounces have disappeared from your Gatorade. And no one is talking about this. Not the news, not other people on Facebook, nobody on Twitter. That is you know. a diminutive Gatorade. Has the price lowered? The price now is still the same. Mm, mm, mm. Four ounces Many gone. It's got that that uh, molded hand grip now. Yeah, it's Gatorade on a diet. It's more slender and <laughs> sleek. Remember when they changed the the beer can? Like the Coors did the wide mouth can. It's like if you can't pour beer into your mouth fast enough by upending it and opening your gob <laughs> we're gonna help was that on cans too because i know it's on the bottles but was it on cans too yeah yeah, yeah they got okay. those big wide mouth cans yeah, yeah wide mouth i know yeah. we didn't want kids to have to shotgun anymore it was like yeah. mickey's it was like the mickey's <laughs> wide mouth yeah, mickey's yeah. Big mouth. yeah. The original the white boy malt liquor <laughs> mickey's they just have to think anybody it's... remember cool cult Colt 45 when they did their menthol flavored beer? Oh, oh no. Like in the oh early God. 90s? <laughs> no, but I drank a lot of Colt 45, though. I used to bring that home in six packs of cans from my job at the BX. <laughs> when you go to Europe, man, the, the flavors of things, they have like f- shrimp flavored Pringles and stuff. It's just awful. Weird. They have Spatsy, too, that orange flavored Coca Cola that's so. Did good. you see the new Lay's flavors they put out? Oh, they're pretty weird. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember. Is it. that the peppercini? Do they have the peppercini no, flavor? Because I want peppercini chips so bad. One, I think. Oh, I don't remember. I, we saw them online, of course. I bring it up and I don't know the names, but yeah. they have bizarre flavors that don't sound appetizing in any way. Those are the three most common answers to questions I ask in my house. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard in, in 20 and I years. I that to your show. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it travels. It travels. Speaking of weird flavors, so some friends of mine went on vacation to Nebraska, and then on their way back, they stopped somewhere and went to a powwow. Oh. Um, and <laughs> the the my friend Travis, uh, he's a dad. He. It was like when they came back, he was like, hey, want to try one of these Kool-Aid pickles? I'm like, huh? He's like, went to a powwow and they were selling Kool-Aid pickles. Whoa. I get pickles and then dump all the pickle juice out, fill it with Kool-Aid and let the pickles sit in there. And I guess this is some Somehow that intrigues me. You talking about Travis from Knockout Pills? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and uh, I was like, and he was showing me the 
the pickle. He's like, here, you want to try them? And like, I, I guess want to try one, that, dude. If you can get one, I'll eat it next I time. I was okay. examining I guess the it was, pickle. Well, I guess it was one that the kids had been <laughs> gnawing on. Oh, yeah. So the end was all split open and looked like a... If you could get me one that the kids had like an STD no, no, problem. No, no. Uh, it was like dyed fucking red. And I was like, oh. no, I don't want to eat that. He's like, no, I'll cut the end off. I'm like, nah, yeah. I'm still... You didn't I still, have it? I don't want to try... I'm so, uh, Pickle with Kool Aid? No, that does not sound good. Well, what is what is Nebraska? Cheyenne and Sioux, probably. I don't know. Are they known for their Kool Aid pickles? <laughs> oh yeah, maybe now, maybe yeah, now yeah. they are. Yeah, it's highly possible. We we were in we were in backwoods Arkansas one time, and there's there's a few people that are from the fringes of civilization in this country store that we're in and jade and, helm conspiracy and, people well it's, uh, we're a little deeper in the woods than that oh. even and uh we're up in the ozarks and this one walks in and starts looking at the selection of of the vast selection of fried things yeah and and it's says just this little like grocery slash and, and <laughs> gas station you know it kind of incredulously, like just loud enough for everyone to hear. She says, "Oh my, these people will fry anything." <laughs> and I'm, like, He's like, I'm like, the whole these people thing down here. I'm like, we could be hanging from a tree by sunset. Like, I didn't even think about you got to watch that shit in the Ozarks, it. man. <laughs> Steve fried squirrel tails. People fry anything. <laughs> They really will, though. I mean, what did the, what all do they have there? They like had Twinkies, Oreos, pickles, and corn on the cob, fried ice cream sandwiches, yeah, it was like anything oh, okay. you could think of. I just literally, if you could think of it, they was for okra. That's, that's chicken. a big thing in Scotland, I guess. Too. I was just gonna say that because really? I live there and they they fry all. They have the worst heart disease rate in Europe, by the way, <laughs> and they fry. Like every fish and chip shops will have fried Twinkie or fried Snickers bar and uh, fried pizza. Boy, yeah, fried pizza. Ew. And I lived. They take like one of those Tortino's party pizzas. Yeah, frozen ones. Yeah, folded in I half. I love them. Uh, I, I ate it every night. Dunk I had it a in fried batter. It in batter and stuff, and then fry it. I oh. lived above a fish and chip shop, so every night I would walk down there and get a fried pizza and fries. You All your health it? problems now can be attributed to that phase of your life. Yeah. I guarantee anything that's wrong with you. I know. Your back, your leg, wow. it's all because of that. Yeah. So is this a, like a new thing in Scotland? Like a fairly new? Their no, cuisine no, wasn't always like this, was Well, it? 20, 30 years probably. Since the 90s that I knew. Yeah. Wow. I think I know why people fry a lot of stuff because it tastes good. so good. <laughs> so maybe you never hear anything about the cuisine from Scotland. Maybe that's why there's nothing ever. Haggis. Real good. That's all so. you hear. Haggis and beer. So they're like, let's just try frying stuff. <laughs> well, because they're, no they're so ornery. <laughs> they're close to England, and England has like notorious for the worst food yes. in the world. Ever. And, and they, teeth. Yeah. Food and teeth, man. There must be a connection the correlation there. there. Yeah. <laughs> But Eating went, that oxtail is bad. But it went from like Scotland to uh, state f- festival or uh, state fairs and stuff here, right? They what? Yeah. Went from like Scotland was where I ever heard about that first, and now it's like at all the state and oh, county yeah. fairs yeah. and yeah. whatever. And That's the only America. good. We went so to the state fair a couple place. years ago. That's yeah. all that was good about it was the. That's the what fried you get. Is the fried Which I still haven't seen stuff. a fried turkey leg yet. Hey, you didn't like the four yeah. H tent with all the animals. Yeah, we that, that was, was probably the, the other part. the other best part. The yeah. Flemish giant. I love checking out all the different roosters and chickens. Yeah, <laughs> check them all out. All yeah. the different varieties. Species. Well, they're same species. But Come on, the cows. Cool. Yeah. You're, you're playing Final Countdown over on the uh, on the main stage. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't support you. I always feel like sorry him. for the band playing the state fair. I'm like, it's Nugent lately. Yeah. You know, he is. Yeah. Oh, he's devolved to like he, that's where he plays now. Gun shows in the state. Fair. Yeah, I think Megadeth was there the last time, and then it was uh, oh, some fun. country guy last the, the most Travis recent one. Right. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say his name. <laughs> oh, Travis. <laughs> Nugent, oh, Nugent and Kid Rock are the big supporters of uh, the Confederacy now, right? They're yeah, the big uh, flag. rebel flag yeah. supporters. Like, yeah. yeah, well, Nugent's the big supporter of anything fa- like close to psychotic and right wing. But I mean, it's just funny. They're both from fucking Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah we're, we're supporting our southern heritage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. South, yeah. southern the, Detroit. The south <laughs> of the North doesn't now, count. I had heard <laughs> that he had said that he stopped using the American flag or the the Confederate flag a long time Who? ago. Uh, Kid Rock. He defended well. He, well, he was in the news recently, like saying oh, defending he it or something. It. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think basically what he said is it was more like a censorship thing. It was like, don't tell me, what, you know, what to do with. Oh, the, I'll I'll wear this or wave this flag if I want to. Oh. 
But if I wonder if all those conservatives knew that he's like pro gay marriage and like he's a he's an entertainer, so he's in that whole realm. And he's he, no one is in that realm and is against gay people or anything. You know, like you don't. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Hollywood's gay, so he can't yeah. can't serve two <laughs> masters. <laughs> Hollywood. Everybody's gay, gay once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, they try to put Martin Short in a dress. Or they do put Martin Short in a dress. Try to they put Chris Rock in a dress. Put Eddie Murphy in a dress. They try to Eddie put, Murphy uh, didn't mind. They try yeah. to put Dave Chappelle in a dress. He said hell no, and he quit. And went to Africa. Well, they also told him to stop using the N word, and he was like, no, I'm going to keep using that. It was more about the dress. <laughs> <laughs> it's more. About it's, uh, it's drafty. And on a note of disagreement, of the rare, the rare <laughs> moment of disagreement between Mark and I. <laughs> just want to highlight it by ending there. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for listening. Next week we have uh, Master Sergeant Brian Varble. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I thought it was this week, but I was wrong. So he's in Maine right now, but he'll be back. And we'll talk to him about combat and uh, conservatism. Guys in dresses. <laughs> we might throw that in there. So, uh, Flaming soldiers. <laughs> that was uh, episode 20 of the Radical Agnostic. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>